Trigger variables determine how a breath is started. A breath can be initiated or triggered either by the ventilator or the patient using time, flow, and pressure. Ventilator triggered breaths are initiated in response to a timer inside the ventilator. Such breaths are characterized as mandatory, implying that the patient has no choice in the matter. Patient triggered breaths are termed spontaneous, assisted, or supported. Spontaneous breath is completely regulated by the patient with no contribution by the ventilator. Assisted breath is initiated by the patient, but all other aspects of the breath are controlled by the ventilator. Supported breath is initiated and ended by the patient, but the breath is delivered under positive pressure by the ventilator. We will be revisiting these terms during modes of ventilation lecture with the associated wave forms to understand them more. I have mentioned that time, flow, and pressure are used to trigger the breath. Let's look into how this is done, beginning with the time triggering method. When a ventilator is set to time triggered ventilation, it will measure a period of time since the last expiration and then deliver a breath. For instance, looking at the waveforms provided, when a respiratory rate of 12 has been set, the ventilator will deliver inspiratory flow exactly every 5 seconds. Such breaths are characterized as mandatory, implying that the patient has no choice in the matter. A time triggered mode is always mandatory. All the other trigger mechanisms permit the patient to have some control over the timing of inspiration. This was the default setting in earlier ventilator models which did not permit the patient to take breaths beyond the set rate. Most modern ventilators allow patient triggering and take some effort to synchronize their mandatory breaths with patient effort. The ability to provide mandatory breath by time triggering has merits, such as ensuring a guaranteed respiratory rate for patients who are insufficiently interested in breathing, providing predictable CO2 removal with a guaranteed minute volume, and eliminating wasted patient effort on triggering the ventilator. However, it also has drawbacks, including potential discomfort, higher sedation requirements, and the risk of deconditioning. The flow trigger is the most commonly used form of triggering for spontaneous modes of ventilation. It works by setting a continuous background flow of gas through the ventilator circuit even during expiration called bias flow. During spontaneous breathing, inspiratory effort diverts some of this background flow away from the circuit to the patient. This results in decreased background flow exiting the ventilator which is sensed by expiratory flow sensor. The difference between the flow rate sensed by inspiratory and expiratory sensors triggers an assisted breath. For instance, if the bias flow during expiration is 5 liters per minute and the patient breathes in at 3 liters per minute, the expiratory flow rate in the ventilator circuit drops by 2 liters per minute. This reduction is detected by the expiratory flow sensor. When this missing 2 liters per minute reaches a specified threshold, the ventilator triggers the inspiratory valve to open and deliver a breath. On the side note, Bias flow helps to achieve peak inspiratory pressure during inspiration and positive end inspiratory pressure during expiration. So, basically in flow triggering, the patient have to generate certain flow rate from baseline to reach the threshold set by the manufacturers or the clinicians to trigger the breath. This means that, patient determines how many of breath, he or she receives. In real time, ventilator will also alert you to the fact that the patient made a spontaneous respiratory effort by coloring the waveform. The clinician sets the flow trigger sensitivity. This is typically set at 1 to 2 liters per minute below the bias flow setting 
which may be programmed into the ventilator or can be adjusted by the clinician. It makes sense that the trigger be set in liters per minute as we are measuring the flow, but ventilators use different ways to set triggering. For instance, the Puritan Bennett 840 allows the user to set a flow trigger directly in liters per minute. In the example provided, the trigger is set to 3 liters per minute. Therefore, in Puritan Bennett models, setting a lower flow trigger value, such as 1 to 2 liters per minute, represents an increase in sensitivity, meaning a lower flow is required to trigger a mechanical breath. In contrast, in the Mackay Servo I model, a lower trigger value means reduced sensitivity. The trigger is adjusted using a dial on the ventilator, with a range from negative 20 to positive 10. This range indicates sensitivity, with negative 20 being the least sensitive and 10 being the most sensitive. Settings between negative 20 and 0 represent a pressure trigger, with values indicating negative pressure in centimeters of water. For example, negative 20 corresponds to a pressure trigger of negative 20 centimeters of water. Settings between 0 and 10 represent a flow trigger, requiring a percentage of the bias flow to be deflected by the patient to trigger a breath. A setting of 0 is the least sensitive and requires a 100% flow deflection, while a setting of 10 is the most sensitive and requires only about 1% of the bias flow. Flow triggers is the most used triggering method for a lot of reasons. It is quite sensitive, that is, little patient effort is required to trigger a mechanical breath, and therefore the patient's work of breathing is not wasted on triggering the ventilation. It allows the patient to have control over their minute volume as the patient decides the rate of respiration, which prevents desynchrony. It is more comfortable because of a decreased work of breathing in triggering, increased control over ventilation and less delay in initiation. It permits a lower level of sedation because it is more comfortable. There are however some problems with flow triggering. It may be too sensitive giving rise to auto-triggering. A form of desynchrony where non-respiratory influences on circuit flow trigger mechanical breaths. For example, the cardiac pulsation, fluid in the circuit, secretions in the airway can also trigger the ventilator. Though the patient has control over triggering, it does not guarantee a minute volume, especially in patients with a diminished or unreliable respiratory drive. Fortunately, most ventilators come with a backup mode which automatically starts a mandatory breath rate if the patient decides to be apneic for some sustained period of time. Such mode is called synchronized mandatory ventilation, which we will see in modes of ventilation video. Just like flow trigger, the pressure triggering describes a method whereby a decrease in circuit pressure is detected by the ventilator pressure sensors and interpreted as patient effort. When the patient inhales against a closed inspiratory valve, it produces a pressure drop, and in response, the ventilator delivers a mechanical breath by opening the inspiratory valve. A typical setting for a pressure trigger is 0.5 to 2 centimeters of water. Here we see the pressure trigger of negative 5 centimeters of water. We can also appreciate the reduction in pressure from baseline in the pressure time waveform given here. However, pressure triggering is an old school method and is seldom used these days for the following reasons. It requires more effort to trigger the ventilator, as a change in pressure of even negative 1 centimeter of water requires more patient effort than a change in flow. There is a wasted respiratory effort, as no inspiratory flow is generated while the patient is inhaling against a closed inspiratory valve. If you remember, the breath is only generated when the pressure threshold is reached.
This wasted effort may be counterproductive when the main objective of mechanical ventilation is to reduce the work of breathing. Despite these drawbacks, there are some scenarios which make pressure triggering useful. It can be used to decrease auto-triggering that happens with flow triggering as pressure is not much affected by conditions that cause auto-triggering. Pressure triggering can be used to test the power of respiratory musculature in the context of an assessment of readiness for extubation. A patient who is able to trigger the ventilator by generating a negative intrathoracic pressure of minus 20 centimeters of water is unlikely to fail extubation due to the weakness of their respiratory muscles. With flow and volume triggering, one would logically think about the volume trigger to be used in the ventilator. But it plays a minimal role in modern ventilators. This is because, under most circumstances a modern ventilator never measures volume directly, but rather calculates it from flow over time. So, if you have your ventilator measuring flow and then converting it into volume, then surely it would be easier and more comfortable for the patient to just trigger breaths according to flow before certain volume is attained. By the same logic, any flow triggering is also technically volume triggering because some volume must change as the result of a change in flow. We can appreciate this analogy from the graphic given. In summary, volume triggering would represent a sort of pointless duplication of flow triggering. Of the existing machines, the Draeger baby log appears to be the only ventilator which offers volume triggering as an option. Now, let's get into some new methods of triggering. The NAVA ventilator utilizes this electrical activity of the diagram or EDI to assist the patient's respiratory efforts in a synchronized manner. The EDI is detected by a properly positioned electrode array on a specially designed isogastric tube. The EDI signal is then passed to the ventilator where the EDI signal is converted into the pressure. The pressure is delivered in proportion to the EDI signal and ends when the EDI signal subsides, and the pressure delivery varies with each breathing effort, and it depends on the measured electrical activity of the diaphragm. Some of the advantages highlighted by the manufacturer include improved synchrony as NAVA does not not have to depend on pressure and flow which gets affected by circuit leaks and asynchrony between patient and the ventilator. Other proposed advantages are the capability to monitor conditions such as Guillain-Barre syndrome and myasthenia gravis, rapid adjustment of pressure volume, independence from blood gas and other biochemical analyses, and a lower pressure requirement compared to conventional triggering methods. NAVA, however, has several drawbacks. It relies on intact respiratory drive mechanisms, so it's ineffective if there's bilateral phrenic nerve paralysis, medullary damage, or neuromuscular junction issues. It also depends on the accurate placement of the nasogastric sensor, which can be problematic due to tube migration or patient removal. Additionally, nasogastric access might be contraindicated in cases of trauma or surgery. Clinical evidence shows no significant improvement in outcomes compared to pressure support ventilation, and it hasn't demonstrated better results in neonates either, though no harm has been reported. Apart from the ventilatory reasons, the catheter and the ventilator are expensive. Shape signal triggering is essentially a method of predicting the next patient's inspiratory effort by observing their expiratory flow waveform. In the waveform given, the green one depicts the patient flow time curve. We need to concentrate on the expiratory part of the waveform. In shape signal triggering, a virtual flow waveform called shape signal is generated by the ventilator. This virtual signal is less than the actual flow by 0.25 liters per second and delayed by 200 to 300 milliseconds. The ventilator is triggered and the expiratory flow curve of actual and virtual waveforms intersect. Shape signal triggering is more sensitive and requires less patient effort compared to the flow trigger. However, 
because the shape signal method has highly sensitive triggering, auto-triggering occurs more frequently than with flow triggering. 